we're starting our recording. Welcome, everybody, to the Back to Basics Ministries online church. Hallelujah. It's Palm Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Palm Sunday, but we're not going to be giving out uh, palm leaves this morning. Praise God. We're going to do a different thing. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Thank you for coming online with us today as we worship the Almighty God. We worship God. We seek God with all our faith. And I praise God for those of you who are worshiping by way of the recording. Thank God for those of you who are online with us live. And we give God the glory and honor. Now, there were some difficulties for people trying to get online uh, this morning. Um, and, and, and some couldn't get on by, could not get on by phone or by internet. And here's the problem. With the number of people doing online church today, and these days, we've noticed this in the last three weeks, that the networks, our provider and other providers, are overwhelmed with the number of pastors, number of ministers doing online church. And so they've got to work out the glitches on their end. So be patient, be patient, praise God. We're going to do something next week that's a little bit different. Uh, uh, we want you to come on at 1045. We'll start our service 15 minutes early so that by the time 11 o'clock gets here, everybody's online. So we just make those adjustments. Now, um, make those adjustments. We get on a little bit early so that we, we override that period of time, that 15-minute window of people trying to get online all at one time. So don't be frustrated. You know what? We said in this ministry three years ago, we warned people, what are you going to do when the churches are closed down? And many of you witnessed are hearing me say that. We warn people, what are you going to do when the church is closed down and, and, and where are you going to go? So a lot of people are frustrated. They don't know what to do. A lot of pastors don't know what to do. They're trying this. They're trying that. And I see a lot of pastors trying to do online ministry. Uh, 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 and, 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 and there's a, this mindset that people have that they've got to be in the brick and mortar building. Ladies and gentlemen, God is just taking that whole worship the building thing, pulling that rug out from under us because many people are married to their buildings. And they don't think they're having church unless they're in a building. But ladies and gentlemen, the church is in you and me. We are the church. Christ dwells in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, hey, you may as well make up your mind. We're in this for the long haul. We've got to make adjustments, and we've got to adjust people's thinking, and we've got to adjust, adjust a whole lot of things because a lot of people have folded up, can't go to church, so what am I going to do? And so, you know, hey, a lot of people are freaking out in their homes, man, and, and, and with this uh, uh, quarantine and now some, some, some of you wives have to, have to face your husbands. Some of you husbands have to face your wives. Some of you parents have to face your children. Some of you children have to face your, 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 your parents. And, 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 uh, and, and you've got to learn how to love one another and live with one another. You were doing fine when you, when you could avoid one another, but now you face the face. You face to face with that guy you married. You face to face with that woman you married. Now, <laughs> oh, uh, and, and uh, some of you said, oh, MG, OMG, OMG. Yes, you need to call on the name of the Lord because you asked for it. And now God has is, God is given you what you asked for. Now face those uh, children. Face your spouse. And, and let Jesus Christ be Lord of your household praise God and and a lot of you need to take the attention off you or off your children or off your spouse and and, and a lot of you are spoiled a lot of you uh, uh, gotta be pampered you, you're so used to being the center of attention now God's fixed it that you've got to turn your attention to God if you're going to survive ladies and gentlemen turn your attention to the Lord call upon the name of the Lord. So there are a lot of great things happening as a result of this quarantine. By the way, by the way, this coronavirus, we're going to we're preaching today on a subject. My subject today is what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost. 
my subject is entitled what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost you may say well Pastor Carter what's that got to do with coronavirus well I have a subtopic my subtopic is why the coronavirus will not last my subject is what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost or why the coronavirus will not last. So we want you to get in a worship mode today. In a worship mode. We worship God with all our heart. Richard Smallwood uh, was singing and he said, he said, he was wounded for our transgressions. And he took that from Isaiah 53. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and with his stripes we're healed. No, I'm not going to go real high, Stacy Lane, and hit that note that I know you can hit so beautifully because your mom could hit it before you. No, Larray, I'm not going to go high, that high and try to hit that note. But with his stripes, we are healed. And so, and, and the nation is healed, ladies and gentlemen. The nation is healed, even though we are facing... Even though we're facing one of the greatest crises we've ever had in our lives, we are healed. God's got this. God's got this. Uh, the singer was singing, earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing that can come upon this earth, no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. And so this is a good time, ladies and gentlemen. This is a good time being quarantined. It's a good time to be shut in with Jesus. And those of you who, you know, you, you've you're at the end of your rope, and we've only been quarantined for two weeks. You're at the end of your rope with your husband or your wife or your children. You need to just repent and just dig into Jesus and put your trust in the Lord. When you worship the Lord from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you can face your spouse. You can face your children. You can face uh, your situation. You can face loneliness. You can face being shut in. God will give you things to do positive things to do and so God wants your attention he wants our attention hey let's ask our friend from Wilmington Delaware the pastor of the Living Water Fellowship let's ask Dr. Jean Bratton to lead us in prayer hello can everyone hear me yes great God bless father God we thank you for the sacred assembly this morning father god as we gather together in your name let those father god who are sick be healed because by your stripes we are healed father god we ask that you bless everyone on father god and bless our our leader pastor carter and his wife jackie as they father god preach and teach your word so, Father God, as we decrease, let your spirit increase and bless everyone who was logged on this morning. And we lift this prayer to you saying, Hosanna, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton, Living Water Fellowship in Wilmington, Delaware. And um, we thank God for that prayer. God is a healer. There is a bomb in Gilead. Expect God to heal. Expect God to heal. You don't have to go all the way out to the brick and mortar to get your healing. God can heal you right where you are because the Holy Spirit lives inside of every believer. And there is nothing impossible for God. We thank God. We're going to ask uh, Dr. Jean Bratton and, 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 and Sister Karen Herzog to take the chat window this morning. I don't know if Jackie has computer capacity this morning. I, I see her with her phone. Okay, Jackie's with us. Okay, we're, okay we ask Jackie, Jean, and Karen. You all can share in the chat window with, with those who come on uh, and have needs. All right, praise God. Turn with me, will you please, to Acts chapter 1. Download Acts chapter 1. Now you may think, well, Pastor God, I had to wait 30 minutes for you, so you're going to shorten your sermon by 30 minutes. Yep, yep, yep. I'll shorten it by 30 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, okay? All right, I'll try. Try my best. Download Acts chapter 1. We're going to look at Acts chapter 1 and a little bit of chapter 2. And in this ministry today, we're going to look at 
um, the day of Pentecost and what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost and why you don't have to be afraid of the coronavirus. And we're going to connect the day of Pentecost with the coronavirus. And then we're going to see why this coronavirus cannot last. And then we're going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about the benefits of being filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, this, I mean, it feels good already. The benefits of being filled with the Holy Ghost. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we're going to blow some of those bishops out of the water who have been fighting against the Holy Spirit. We're going to blow a whole lot of church folks out of the water who don't want the Holy Ghost. We're going to blow a whole lot of the preachers out of the water. We're going to blow some of those mega churches apart who don't preach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and we're going to blow a, a lot of those uh, jail keepers who have been keeping Christians in prison and just giving them a little bit of this and a little bit of that and not preaching the full gospel. We're going to blow them out of the water by the authority of the name of Jesus today so that you can be free. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants you to be free. It took a coronavirus to get some of you on the online church. It took a coronavirus to shut down some of these churchy churches, some of these religious organizations. It took a coronavirus to get uh, many of God's people to realize, hey, I've been going through the motions, the religious motions, but I don't have a real relationship with God. And, and a lot of people, their eyes are opening, Dr. Gene Bratton, to the fact, you know, I've been going to church all this time, but I really don't know Jesus. I don't have the power in me. Well, don't beat yourself up. You can know Jesus. You can get the power in you. And, and many of you who have been going to church and are not born again, this is not condemnation. This is hope. You can be born again. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And what a lot of us have been seeing in our busy church going and our meticulous, got to be there every Sunday, got to be there three days a week. A lot of us in our church going and church attendant, attendance have realized We've been worshiping the church and not the Lord Jesus Christ. So it took a coronavirus to get people to see that God requires more of us than what we've been giving him. And so I pray that you will not harden your hearts, but that you'll open your heart and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will open your eyes and see what the Lord wants you to see. Because after this epidemic, this pandemic is over, we will never be the same again. I guarantee you. This may be prophetic, but I guarantee you. We will never be the same again, ladies and gentlemen, after this pandemic. No, not the church not your brick-and-mortar assembly when you're permitted to go back. No, your household is not going to be the same because God is going to do a thing in healing his people. He's going to do such a marvelous thing in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic. And so those who have ears hear and those who have eyes see. God is doing a new thing. There's an anointing that God is pouring out upon his people, and God is going to break people away from religion and idolatry and worshiping that building and having, uh, having to sit in a certain seat at a certain time on Sunday morning. God is going to do a new thing, and he's going to reveal to us through a spirit of revelation that he is God, and he wants to be worshipped wherever people are. And that he is willing to invade your space and come all the way from heaven down to right where you are. If you're living in your van, 
your SUV, if you're homeless, if you're living under a, a bridge in the city, if you, if you don't have a home, you don't have an apartment, you're living in your neighbor's car, old car, God can come right where you are and fill you with his Holy Spirit and do something marvelous. And God's going to let a lot of you people know, a lot of us know, you don't have to be the slave for the church, quote unquote, anymore. You don't have to be the pastor's slave. You don't have to be the bishop's slave and do the bishop's will to stay in good graces with the bishop. See, we're finding this out from looking at our government officials. There are still many people kissing up to certain government officials trying to stay in their good graces. But the government's getting rid of them uh, like flies. Boom, 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 firing them, getting rid of them one by one. And use them and misuse them. Use them and kick them to the curb. And ladies and gentlemen, God is that, not that way. You don't have to kiss up to God to get favor from him. God says, worship me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. So praise God. Thank God for the coronavirus. Now, we're not thanking God for the death of all these people. God's not killing them. But God's got a plan, ladies and gentlemen. God's got a plan for why he has allowed this thing to come about. And his plan is going to get the attention of a whole lot of people, especially a lot of people who call themselves Christians. So having said that, let's look at what Jesus said. And uh, it's recorded in the book of Acts as Luke writes to Theophilus a record of the life of Jesus and what took place in Jerusalem. Verse 4, and being assembled together with them, chapter 1, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. This is a very important verse in Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, and this verse can revolutionize your life. It can revolutionize, revolutionize your marriage, revolutionize your fatherhood or motherhood or your childhood. The Scripture says, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Ladies and gentlemen, as we go through the restrictions that are, have been applied to us and how our lives have been changed by this coronavirus uh, pandemic, Ladies and gentlemen, look at the good. Benefit from the quarantine. Benefit from the social distancing. Obey your local, state, and, and federal officials. Stay at home. Some of you, some, some, look, I'm talking to some hard-headed folks. Some of you are going to go out there anyhow. You, don't, you just don't care. Okay, so uh, I'm going to obey. I'm going to obey because God has a purpose in all this. God might have to separate us, praise God, from other people so that we can get what he's trying to get us to understand. Praise God. Hi, Jackie Carter. God's going to have to separate us from other people so that we can get all that he wants for us. And when we look at this time of separation, this time of quarantine, benefit from it. Jesus said to his disciples, his followers, tarry in Jerusalem. He gave them orders, wait, wait unto the promise of the Father. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, that, that was written for the disciples. Listen, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. What was given to the apostles was given to us. Jesus said, wait, and, and he urged his apostles, wait. He said, I know you're eager to go out and do ministry. I know you're eager to start an online church. I know you're eager to start an underground church. I know you're eager to uh, start making tapes and YouTubes. I know that, but wait. Tarry. What's tarry mean? Wait. What's wait mean? Tarry. Wait for the promise 
of the Father. And so I urge you, I urge you, my fellow believers, wait for the promise. Well, what do you mean wait? It means stay before the presence of God and seek God and anticipate God and open your heart to God for what he has for you. Okay, so you can't go to your church. Good. Good. This is good. This is good because a lot of the churches, you would never get baptized in the Holy Ghost by keep on, keep on going uh, to those brick and mortar buildings because many of them, they're designed, the ministries are designed to keep the Holy Ghost out. So Good. Pastor Carter, you're saying a whole lot, man. It's, you're taking a whole lot upon yourself by saying that. Well, I said it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perhaps this will open the eyes of a lot of people to realize, hey, we don't have what God said we ought to have. And now, now that you're quarantined, why don't you get what God has? Get it. Get it while you can. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. As the farmer would say to his mule, get it, get it, get it. Get it while you can. Let this time be the time where you're going to get the Holy Ghost baptism. Well, Pastor Carter, I don't believe in the Holy Ghost baptism. Well, it's time for you to read your Bible and believe. Read your Bible and believe. The whole New Testament is based on the the, the death and resurrection of Jesus and Jesus sending the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So if you don't get this, what are you, what are you doing? Well, Pastor Carter, you know, they, they frowned upon the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they said, it's, you know, it, it's of the devil and all that. Well, repent for even thinking that. Repent for even listening to them. Repent for even saying that to people. And you preachers who have been preaching against the Holy Ghost baptism, you need to repent. Some of you need to just shut up. Move over and let Jesus take over. And when people get what God wants, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. When we get what God wants for us to have, hey, uh, coronaviruses and the viruses that are coming and the pandemics that are coming and the, the, the terrible times to come will not touch the believers. That is why we've got to focus on getting all that God has for us right now. Stop worrying about yourself. Stop being so selfish, ladies and gentlemen. Everything doesn't revolve about you. It's all about Jesus. Let us dedicate ourselves to glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ, and let us stop being so blessed, God, selfish about stuff. Everything has to be done about us. I don't feel this. Or I don't, I'm not yet. It ain't about you. It's about promoting Jesus Christ in a world that's heading to hell. And many of us don't have a whole lot of time, ladies and gentlemen, to shuck and jive and, 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 and pamper ourselves and feel sorry for ourselves. It ain't about us. It's about saving a world for Jesus Christ and Christ in us, the hope of glory and obeying the call of God upon your life and, and getting the power that God has for you to live the rest of your life doing what he has called you and me to do. That's what this thing is all about. We're going to look at what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost and why this coronavirus cannot be successful and will not last. The key to this whole thing is Jesus told his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem. I know you're eager to go out, eager to go out and preach about me and tell people about me. But wait for the power. Wait for the anointing. And when the anointing comes upon you, and when the power comes upon you, then you can run through a truth, leap over a wall. Nothing can stop you. You won't have to be afraid of a virus. You won't have to be afraid of the government. You won't have to be afraid of quarantine. You won't have to be afraid of whatever this world puts on you. You won't even have to be afraid of the devil. But you've got to wait for the power. Because if you don't have the power, this is what he's saying to them, 
in verse 4 of chapter 1 of Acts. If you don't have the power, you cannot be successful. And bless God, they waited on the Lord. They even chose one to uh, succeed, uh, Judas Iscariot, who had, who had um, deceived Jesus and ran from him. They chose Matthias to be the 12th disciple, and they waited. And they waited. Well, what did they do while they waited? They met in an upper room. They worshiped God. They praised God. They sang praises unto God. They prayed. You say, well, that's boring. That's boring. Well, it's boring because you're, uh, the Scripture says we are in this world but not of the world. But there's still a lot of people listening. You're of the world. When you, when you stop being of this world and realize that, that uh, we are crucified with Christ, nevertheless we live, yet not us, but Christ lives in us. When we come to, to the realization that the moment we declared Jesus to be our Savior and Lord, we died, we died to ourselves, that should blow selfishness out the window. It ain't about you. When we asked Jesus to come and to save us, we realized we had reached the end of our rope. We couldn't do anything else for ourselves. And some of you, including me, we were so blessed, God, fed up with ourselves. Come on now, remember, we were so fed up with ourselves and the lifestyle we were living and how we were messing up by the numbers. We couldn't even stand ourselves. Our family didn't want us around. We didn't even want to be around ourselves. And we called on the Lord for salvation, and he gave us a new birth. But then a lot of us have forgotten where God brought us from because you're comfortable in Zion. So comfortable sitting up in church in your padded pew hearing a, a, a sermon uh, by your pastor that's tickling your, your ears. And, 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 and we're so accustomed that if the pastor dares to preach anything that's going to rub us the wrong way, we vote him out or vote her out, or we change churches. We hop in our car, and we drive to another church. And that's American Christianity. But God has made it possible that we can sit down. We can't even get out of our houses, some of us. We can't even get in our cars. And if we go to the service station, we can't even buy gas for our cars. So we've got to stay home, and, and what are you going to do now that you're home? I'm talking about those of you who can't stand your husband. You can't stand your wife. You can't stand your children. You hate your mama. Now you've got to see your mama all day long. Now you've got to see your husband all day long. Now you've got to see your children all day long. And a lot of us are realizing the problem is not in them the problem is in us. Yes, we've been faking it. We've been showing a lot of people in the church that we're holy and righteous. I mean, we've got the church members fooled. But ladies and gentlemen, it's a time of reckoning. It's a time of reckoning. And so, so let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. In, in uh, chapter 2, we're going to get to what Satan saw and 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 uh, we're gonna it's gonna blow some minds, okay? And it's gonna blow this coronavirus off the face of the map when when we realize what God is doing. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, chapter two, verse one, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all, listen to this, verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak 
in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And then the Bible gives a list of the nations that were assembled in Jerusalem. And they, verse 12, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? What's the meaning of this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Then Peter stood up and preached and said, No, no, these men are not drunk. It's only the third hour of the day. But this is that which, the, which, which God spoke to uh, the prophet Joel. In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream, dream, have visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and my handmaids will I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then Peter said, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that day 3,000 people were birthed into the church. They did not join First Baptist. They did not join Second Pentecostal. They did not join Third Presbyterian. No, 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 no. They did not de join some denominational organization that builds its own religion based on what they feel and what they believe. No, no, no. They were birthed into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ became their Savior and Lord, and the Lord poured out the Holy Ghost upon them as the Holy Ghost, listen, baptized them into the body of Christ. And the moment you and I received Jesus Christ as Lord, the Holy Ghost baptized us into the body of Christ. And so now we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen who need not to be ashamed. No, we do not need to study the catechisms. We do not need to study the denominational doctrine. No, we do not need uh, to study the church bylaws, but we need to study the Word of God, the whole, the logos, the whole Word of God, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can rightly divide the Word of truth. And so God is using a... a uh, coronavirus epidemic to bring us back to basics to show us what we ought to be doing that we need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost now the Holy Ghost has baptized us into the body of Christ it means, means from the time we declare that Jesus Christ is our Savior and Lord we became Christians and we were baptized by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ that's how you join the church you get baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit now in order to do the work of the Lord and to promote Jesus Christ and be a witness for him we need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost now see look the baptize the Holy Ghost baptizes us into the body of Christ now we need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost ladies and gentlemen Jesus said tarry you in Jerusalem wait in Jerusalem for the power in other words he said Wait until I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Let me soak you in the Holy Spirit. And when you get the Holy Ghost soaking, then you can go into all the parts of the world. Oh, I feel good down in my sanctified soul. You get baptized by the Holy Spirit into the church. Then you wait on the power of the Lord. You seek Him. You trust Him. You believe Him. You ask Him for it. And then believe that the Holy Ghost is going to baptize you into himself, that he's going to fill you with the power you need to worship God, with the power you need to live in the same household with your husband, with the power you need to live in the same, under the same roof with your children, with the power you need uh, to be a witness for Jesus Christ, with the power you need to override your own selfish, bless me, bless mine, or what about me? God can help you to override that self selfishness and put your trust in the Lord then you'll be at a place where Lord here am I you'll be like Isaiah God said whom shall we send 
Isaiah said, Lord, here am I. Send me. And so as we wait, ladies and gentlemen, under these restrictions brought on by a coronavirus, we can wait on the Lord. I urge you to spend time in the Scriptures. I urge you to tell your family, hey, look, I'm spending quality time with Jesus. And these are my hours, my moments. Don't bother me. Love them. But seek the Lord. Don't seek the Lord how you can get down to the mall or how you can get to the movies or how you can sneak to a restaurant or what restaurants are open. Seek the Lord. Lord, how can I best serve you? And give me the power. Give me the will. Give me the strength. Give me the courage to seek you. Because, Lord, and, and let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, most of us have never sought the Lord in our lives. Yes, you got saved because you reached a place where you couldn't, you couldn't even stand your messed up self. I was there. You couldn't even look in the mirror and smile at your messed up self. That's how messed up some of us were. And then we gave our lives to Jesus and asked Jesus to come into our life and save us, and God took away that adultery, that desire for adultery, that a desire for idolatry, that taste for nicotine, that taste for liquor. Uh, he, he rescued uh, some of you from a life of sodomy, some from a life of being a lesbian, and, 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 and made you realize what a natural man, a natural woman really is. And, 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 and yet, we have never, many of us have never really sought God. Now, God, what do you want me to do? Lord, I know I'm different. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And, 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 and I go to church, and I, I put in my time, and I come home, I still feel the same old, same old. And, and, and am I caught in religion? Lord, what do you want me to do? And God is saying, tarry in Jerusalem until the power comes. In other words, seek God for the power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, and wait on him. And when he comes, ladies and gentlemen, when the anointing comes upon you, you will know it. I want to ask you to join me every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Let's make this 645 now. Every Wednesday night for the rest of this month of April Every Wednesday night, 6.45 p.m., where I will be teaching about how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How to get it, get it, get it, get it, and know that you've got it. And this is going to bless a lot of people. Now, look here. Look here. When the believers, and we'll try to bring this to a close, when the believers in Jerusalem, 120 of them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible says they began to speak with other tongues. We're going to talk about tongues in my teachings on Wednesday night because some of you have been messed up by the church about tongues. We're going to teach about tongues. And yes, tongues is of the Lord. I read that in 1 Corinthians 12, and I see that in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, and I see it again in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So we're going to teach about tongues, but we're also going to teach about other gifts of the Spirit on Wednesday nights. The gift of prophecy, the gift of knowledge, the gift of love, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of discernment, the gift to lay hands on the, you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, the gift of power to cast out demons, all of these. So many people are hung up on tongues, but they're missing the great opportunity to glorify Jesus in other areas of their lives. So join with me on Wednesdays for that segment. But look, when, when Satan, listen, 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 ladies and gentlemen, listen, listen, listen. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried in the grave. And the Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, he entered into the underworld and he led captivity captive. But when, listen, when Jesus died on the cross and they laid him in the grave, his spirit went into hell, ladies and gentlemen. The psalmist, the psalmist wrote uh, the words of Christ that you will not leave my spirit in hell. And God did not leave his spirit in hell. But Jesus entered into hell. You've got to check this out, ladies and gentlemen. 
what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost because at the same moment that the children of God in that upper room were receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the power and the anointing, Satan heard, uh, a few minutes before that took place, Satan heard about it. Jesus had already gone into hell. Jesus in hell, the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4, he led captivity captive. The scripture later says he paraded them before God Almighty. So Jesus in the spirit went into hell, and, and uh, when he entered into hell, the demons tried to prevent him from getting to Satan's throne until powers and principalities rose up and tried to move him, and Jesus blew them away. And, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places tried to block Jesus, and the leaders, uh, rulers of the darkness of the world, tried to prevent Jesus from getting to the throne of Satan, and Jesus just blew them all out of the way, and Jesus walked. Uh, that's why the scripture says uh, 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 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, ruler spirit, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And we win because Jesus won the victory for us. And Jesus went straight to Satan's throne in hell and said, give me the keys to the kingdom. What? What are you talking about, Pastor Carter? The scripture says that Jesus stripped Satan of all his power and authority, took back the keys to the kingdom. What keys are we talking about? The keys that Satan stole from Adam when Satan deceived Adam and Eve and took over the rulership of this world, the keys of authority over this world. Satan owned those keys because he took them by hook and crook. But Jesus, in the spirit, his body laid in the grave, but his spirit went into hell and took the keys back from Satan. Then, on that Sunday morning, the third day, Jesus rose from the dead, praise God, bodily, bodily, ladies and gentlemen, physically, he got up from the grave. The Holy Ghost came uh, 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 back into that body. His body was glorified by God. Jesus rose from the dead. And, and uh, we have witnesses. He was not there. Peter and John saw that he was not there. Mary and the other Mary and women who went to an old he not here. The angel sat on the tomb and said, He is risen. He's not here. The one, the one uh, you are looking for, he is not here. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we see Jesus, Jesus rose from the dead, and then when Jesus appeared to his, his disciples in the next 40 days, as he made appearance, appearances before his disciples, he told them, Behold, I give you. Listen, I give you, my followers, believers, Christ-filled, blood-washed, I give you the keys to the kingdom of God. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then God told us to go into all the world preaching the gospel, the Great Commission, and so, ladies and gentlemen, what Satan saw scared him. He heard about this. He knew Jesus shook him up. Jesus put a whooping on him. They had to assign Satan to hell's hospital. Jesus beat him so badly, demoralized him, stripped him of all his power, took the keys from him, and Satan was in the hell's, in hell's hospital trying to recover when uh, when uh, a couple of days later, several days later, somebody came to visit Satan in the hell's hospital and said, hey, uh, I need to tell you this. Uh, uh, I need to tell you this. This ain't fake news. <laughs> and, uh, he, told, he, he told the devil, this ain't fake news. Something's about to go down up in Jerusalem. It's getting ready to go down. There's 120 of them. 
assembling in a room and they're worshiping God and they're waiting on some kind of power and 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 this is something you need to tend to attend to. We know you can't leave the hospital and Satan heard that and he signed himself out of the hospital and he limped and got on uh uh, uh on his plane and he he <coughs> he flew uh to Jerusalem uh Tel Aviv airport and 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 went down into Jerusalem and and hobbled and crawled and and uh, and with his one eye cuz Jesus knocked the other eyeball out of the socket he peeped with his one eye in the in, through the keyhole in the upper room, and what he saw the moment he peeped his eye into that keyhole, he saw the Holy Ghost fall upon the believers. 120 of them were baptized with the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. They began speaking the languages of many nations that were gathered in Jerusalem unlearned, uneducated men and women began speaking in strange languages that they had never spoken before, and, and uh, the Holy Ghost came and lit on their shoulders. Satan saw all this, and, and the Holy Ghost came in the form of cloven tongues of fire and lit on the shoulders of everyone in there except Satan, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and power and Satan said, oh, no, oh, no, I should never have messed with Jesus. I should have left him alone. I should never have rebelled against God when I was Lucifer, the anointed cherub. I made a big mistake fighting against God. I should never have crucified Jesus. I should have stayed in heaven when I had a chance and minded my own business. But they kicked me out. I can never get back. But, oh, no, what I see today, what I see today, oh, no, I will never, ever, ever be able to get back to heaven. I will never be able to defeat God. I will never be a listen to this. I will never be able to conquer God's people. Nothing I form against them, no weapon I form against them is going to prosper. And I've got to spend the rest of eternity pretending that I've got some power. I've got to spend the rest of eternity deceiving people, lying to people, corrupting people's minds corrupting the body of Christ, making them think that I've got some power. Oh, no! Oh, no! Look what Jesus has done now. I looked in this keyhole and I saw 120 people. Now I see 120 Jesuses. I see 120 Jesuses filled with the same power that Jesus had to whip me and put me in this predicament. And now I can't stop the church. I cannot stop the church. I can send a coronavirus. I can send an HIV virus. I can send a SARS virus. I can send Ebola. I can start world wars. I can kill off masses of people. But I cannot defeat the children of God if they keep their eyes fixed on Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost blew his mind. He had a spiritual heart attack. And he realized that the church of the living God has power, that the same power that God used to destroy Satan now lives in the true believers. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you based on what the scripture says. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. That the same Holy Ghost that fell upon the believers in the upper room in Jerusalem, 120 of them, and they were filled with power and the anointing 
the ability to speak in other tongues, the ability to prophesy, the ability to heal the sick, the ability to uh, uh, stop epidemics. This same power lives in you and in me. And if you don't have the power, be honest enough and say, God, I want this power. Be brave enough, ladies and gentlemen, to break away from the ignorant teachings of your church or your pastor or your bishop or your mama or your daddy or your husband or your wife. Be brave enough and bold enough to break away from those ignorant teachings and, and, and loose yourself from the imprisonment that people have put your mind in and that the church has put your mind in. Be bold enough to believe the scriptures and say, I believe the Bible. I believe the word of God. The scripture says that they are blessed who put their trust in the Lord and do not respect the proud nor such as turn aside the lies. And the Bible says that you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible, it's a commandment. It's a commandment. The Bible says, be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. Stop running from the filling of the Holy Spirit. Your intellect ain't going to get it. Your association with First Baptist or Second Pentecostal or Third Presbyterian ain't going to get it. Your kissing up to the bishop ain't going to get it. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost and God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. You may say, oh, that's only for preachers. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. The Bible says, be ye. Say, I am a ye. I am a ye. Be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. And you watch what God can do. No tsunami, no tornado, no hurricane, no coronavirus will prevail over God's people. You may say, well, there are a lot of Christians dying from the coronavirus. Yes, 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 a lot of us may have to be victims of the calamities that come. But the Scripture gives us peace. The Scripture gives us peace. Oh, Psalm 53, 57, 3. Lord, hide me in the shadow of thy wings until these calamities be past. Read Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty, I was saying to the Lord, you are my God, my refuge, and my fortress. In you will I trust. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what comes down the road, be prepared for it. How can I be prepared? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, when this coronavirus thing is over a lot of folks ain't going to be the same <laughs> Woo! America ain't going to be the same the nations are not going to be the same praise God because people are going to put their trust in the Lord amen we're at a place now you either believe God or you perish you either believe God or you perish your church can't help you Pastor can't help you. He can't spend, some of them pastors can't spend those lies they've been spending to keep you under their control. They can't control you for your money, your finances. They can't promote you to positions that you don't qualify for based on your family name. Now let God promote you. And when God promotes you, wait for the power. Then you can act out your promotion by God by resting in his power and letting him use you for what he saved you to do. It's a good time, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good time to seek the Lord for what he has for you and me to do. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And while you wait, ask God, God, prepare me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. The songwriter said, He is preparing me. He is preparing me. Daryl Coley said, He's preparing me for something I'm not ready to handle right now. He is preparing me. Let Him prepare you. Let Him chasten you. 
Let him humble you. Let him do whatever he has to do. And I'm talking about me too. And there will be times when your family won't understand you. Your, your spouse won't even understand you as you're going through this preparation. But you tell them, please, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Praise God. Father God, we thank you and bless you and praise you. Thank you for this message, Lord God, this message of hope. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Greater are you in us than he that's in the world. Lord, encourage your people. Lord, you have saved us, you have sanctified us, set us apart. Now we trust you to keep us. That no weapon, no, no coronavirus, no tsunami, no tornado, no fire, no violence, no devastation, no sickness, no disease shall separate us from your love. Rise up, O oh God. Rise up in your people. Rise up. Cause your people to be attentive to your word and, and help your people, the blood wash, those who call themselves Christians, to humble themselves and call upon your name. Help us to break off all of our sins and to trust you. Lord, you said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. Bring healing to the land, not just America. Remember Spain and Italy. People are dying there more than they are in America. Remember England. Remember the nations. But God, remember all of the whole world, that all over the world, people will hear the gospel and will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and receive the new birth, become new creatures in Christ, then fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may glorify Jesus for the rest of our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. I bind any spirit of infirmity by the authority of the name of Jesus. I cast out all sickness and all disease from your bodies by the authority of the name of Jesus. I bind every lying tongue in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I do this by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we thank God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and before I stop the recording, I want you all to stay online for a few minutes so we can ask, answer your questions, hear your comments, but before um, I stop the recording, I want to say we will continue on Wednesday nights, Wednesday nights for the month of April, <coughs> Wednesday nights for the month of April, I'm teaching on why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wednesday nights, our regular scheduled time is 7 o'clock, but we will, we will say 6.45, quarter to 7, Eastern time, Wednesday nights, for the rest of this month, how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You want to know how? We'll teach you how based on the scriptures. Amen, amen, amen. Let's end our recording. Mm -hmm.